better choices. Everything in life is a choice. Every big thing and every little thing, everything is a choice that you get to make. And there's no such thing as no, that wasn't a choice. What else could I do? You still make the choice to proceed in one direction or in another direction. Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Ali Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world, and you are joining us here today for Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. So when you are making that choice, you're focusing your energy on what you're picturing and what you're believing in your mind. So what happens? The energy is going to move into making that a reality. You heard the expression where your attention goes, energy flows, and perhaps more importantly, whatever you focus on expands. So what does this look like in your life? If something's bothering you and you don't want it in your life, you want to get rid of it, you want it to go away. If it's something hurting physically, emotionally, spiritually, you just want to feel better and you want it to be gone. Well, that's focusing your energy on what you don't want. You're making it bigger. You're causing it to be more in your face. What can you do instead? You can make a different choice. You know the well-known psychiatrist Carl Jung said, what you resist persists. Well, now why is it happening? Because the whole act of resisting because you want it to make it go away, because you want it to not bother you, because you want it to make it better. You want to stop hurting. You want to stop suffering. Suffering is always optional. Things happen in your life that can cause physical pain, but it's your awareness that's aware of the pain. And the suffering part, that's a choice you're making to think of it as I don't want this. What can you do instead? If you find yourself hurting physically, I know for me, that's always been the biggest challenge or because of uh, health issues, health challenges, things happen that make it hard for me to breathe or they make it hard for me to get my heart to calm down. And for years, I was just thinking, oh no, don't do this. I can't do this now. I have something else I need to do. Or after the surgery left me unable to speak and people kept calling me and they wanted to interview me. And I always hoped I'd have a voice for the interview. Those are the kinds of things where your attention goes, energy flows, and the better choice I was making back then was, yes, I have a voice today and it's going to be here the whole time and people are going to understand what I'm saying clearly. So you have a choice about when something's hurting you physically, emotionally, spiritually. What's the choice? I, t I have a whole bookshelf of Deepak Chopra's books. I believe he's written more than 90. Though he himself said, God writes the books and I collect the royalties, which is how I create also. Tell the universe, this is what I want to create. The universe gives it to me. I never sit in front of a blank page. I never wonder, what am I going to talk about with you today? I never wonder, what am I going to write about, et cetera, et cetera. It's what you put out to your universe, to the universe, because 
of your belief systems. So what I discovered, because some really, 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 really painful things happen in my life as they do to many people. And I just say, no, don't do that now. No, don't do that now. What do you think happened? I was focusing on the fact it was hurting. Did it go away? No. So what I learned from Deepak Chopra and what I learned from lots and lots of people who understand that who we are is an eternal. It's that we're beings, we're eternal beings. We're not human beings, we're beings having human experiences. So from all of these teachers in my world, I learned accept what's happening and go with it. In other words, if something's hurting, allow the hurting to happen, to feel it, to go through it. Yeah, you're going to feel it because of conscious awareness. It's going to be something you're aware of. You can say, am I this pain or am I the one who's aware of the pain, who's observing the pain. It took me a long time to realize what Deepak Chopra was talking about when he was describing the observer rather than being what is observed. So now when something hurts me, when my heart goes in that place, when it's hard to breathe, I welcome it in. I allow it in. And I let myself go through it. And when I do, when I remember to do that, because it's still a fairly new choice for me, when I remember to allow it and to allow myself to be with it, guess what happens? I get through it faster. Whatever's bothering me, whatever's hurting, I get through it faster. So... Those are the ways to make better choices because everything that happens in your world reflects a choice that you are making. There are choices that you're making in every moment. I don't know how they figure this stuff out, but the word from the probably psychologists, neurologists, Whoever does the experiments, if they're doing experiments, that cause them to say, we make 35,000 choices every day. 35,000. So my question to you is, how come your world looks exactly the same today, including all the things you don't want in it, as it looked yesterday? and the day before, and the day before, and the day before. And on the subject of making choices, people will talk about, think positive. Is thinking positive any different from thinking negative? I love the way Deepak Chopra describes it. He says, think of life as a river with two riverbanks, and one riverbank is a positive thinking, and the other riverbank is the negative thinking. And what you want to do is stay in the middle of the river. Don't get caught on either bank, because positive thinking doesn't move your life forward, just as negative thinking doesn't keep you stuck unless you're choosing to stay stuck. Everything's a choice. Why is everything a choice? Because events just are. It's how you interpret them. Nobody does anything to you. It's how you interpret other people's behaviors, other people's choices other people's actions. It's how you interpret the circumstances in your awareness that 
causes you to feel good or bad. It's your choice. You may notice that I have been making my presentations shorter and shorter. Because, have you heard this one? I do a lot of reading, a lot, a lot, a lot of reading. And these days, the word is, again, I don't know who <laughs> figures this stuff out. They say, humans, remember we're beings who are having human experience. We're not human beings. We're beings having human experiences. Humans have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. That a goldfish is six to eight seconds and a human is closer to three seconds. I could see that sometimes on some of my websites where I see the analytics. And interesting, I live in America and most of my visitors are coming from Indonesia. They're making a choice to come to me. I was noticing, <laughs> oh, I didn't count them. It was 20 to 30 different countries of people who were listening to my podcast. They're making choices where they want to go, where they want to stay, where they don't want to stay. Everything, every moment in our lives. It's a choice, and we alone are in control of that choice. When bad things happen, as they do in everyone's life, you get to choose your response. And I'll tell you what, speaking from personal experience, if you choose to look for the good, for the gifts in every moment, even in the bad situations, you're always going to find what you look for. And it'll get you through the feeling bad place and back into, I'm okay. I'm the observer. I'm not the pain. I'm not the event. I'm just the observer. Well, I'm going to go and I'm in the process of changing how I edit. I'm so excited. I have a new software for editing this talk that I'm giving right now. And it's so beautiful. So you should be hearing a whole lot better recordings from me now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. And remember to enjoy. That's capital I-N. Capital J O I every moment because you conscious awareness don't live outside of your body. You process everything within. Remember to join our Facebook group where you're going to see some extra videos, some extra information. Make a friend ask questions. Tell me where you're listening from. And you know what? I was just thinking, I've discovered this really, really cool thing. If you live someplace where you have a public library, check out if your public library has Hoopla, H-O-O-P-L-A. They have books, they have videos, they have great courses, they have, oh, I forgot what you call it, a curiosity channel, which is, well, that's right up my alley. I'm curious about everything. Love to learn. Love to learn new things. And by the way, if you have some new things you want to share with me, do that. Anyway, go through your public library to Hoopla because I'm getting all these amazing books, these amazing courses. And when I'm doing work or cooking, I like to listen or have something playing in the background or I can see out of the corner of my eye. It's time to enjoy life that's within you and also to be in silence. I look forward to seeing you next time.